Einstein, the Pacific, and polygamy are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is March 14th, 2023. It is the 73rd day of the year. You got 292 days left. Today is the 11th Tuesday in the 11th week in the 84th day of winter. Six days left until spring. And we are still getting walloped with winter storms here in the Pacific Northwest. We got one rolling in the next two days. Right now outside it's pouring and California is about to be hit again. The mountain areas are just socked in with snow. I think they've cured their drought for a couple years. Right now, the mountains everywhere in California are just covered in snow. Like the deepest snow they've had in decades. And they have at least one more big storm rolling through in the next couple days. Now, most people would say, oh, drought's over. Well, it, it might be over for maybe a couple years, five years or something like that. There's just too many people in California. It's going to eventually be in drought status again here in, I don't know, a year or two. Eh, probably about the next three years, they'll go back to drought. I grew up in Southern California, and I remember like two or three different times where we went out of the drought status and then right back in a few years later. One year, I remember being in Los Angeles and the mayor, Tom Bradley at the time, was in a news conference talking about how bad the drought was and just all this water rationing and we're going to have to do all this stuff. It was about 10 minutes after his speech that the skies just opened up and it seemed like it rained for weeks. Anyway, if today's your birthday, you're still a Pisces. Today is Pi Day. Pi Day is on March 14th, and any day that combines fun, education, and pie is a day worth celebrating. That's what it says on their website. Pi is known by the Greek letter, it looks like this. It is a constant value used in math that represents the ratio of a circumference of a circle and its diameter which is just 3.1415. It has all these numbers, so I don't understand anything about math. I'm horrible at math. I would have like honors history classes and I did essays at the school, I did speeches, but I was always in the lowest level math class you could find in high school. College was a complete struggle. The only way I made it through college was the use of calculators. When I was in high school, we weren't allowed to use calculators in math class. Just some people, they just can't do math. I'm one of them. I always remember what Liz Lemon said on 30 Rock. I tell jokes because I struggle with math. Yeah, but today is pie thing, and I'm sure that means something to someone that likes math. Today's also National Learn About Butterfly Days. Yeah, it's a thing. You know how you celebrate this day? You actually learn about butterflies. All right, let's see what else March 14th has given us. 1780, the American Revolutionary War, Spanish forces capture Fort Charlotte in Mobile, Alabama, the last British frontier post capable of threatening New Orleans. 1900, the Gold Standard Act is ratified, placing the United States currency on the gold standard. 1901, Utah Governor Herbert Manning Wells vetoes a bill that would have eased restrictions on polygamy. Now, everyone knows the Mormons did a lot of this. They'd have multiple wives, and that was just kind of their thing. And then there was laws passed against this, which I've always been kind of sketchy on that one, and I'm not sure how they reasoned it out, because if it's part of your religion, shouldn't the state stay out of it? Now, myself, I have one wife, and that's more than I need. I don't need a second, third, or fifth wife, especially if they're like the one I have right now who keeps bringing home pets. I wouldn't be able to make videos anymore. I'd be out feeding animals all day. But if that's your thing, I think you should be allowed to do it. The problem is a lot of times they're marrying a little too young. At least that was the problem back in the day. I mean, I understand no 16 year old girl wants to marry a 60 year old man. That was one of the biggest problems they had. It's not like these days polygamy is a real problem. It's like less than 0.5% actually participate in this. That's really how it is with most industrialized countries. It isn't until you start getting into some of Africa's countries where it's actually a thing. According to Pew Research, 28% of the families in Nigeria are polygamy families. I don't know what the proper term is for that. Or They're practicing polygamy. In Mali, it's 34%. Burkina Faso, it's 36%. The only country outside of Africa that does it above, let's say, 2% is Afghanistan with about 7%. So it's not really a big thing, but it's still there. 1903, Pelican Island National Wildlife Reserve. The first national wildlife reserve in the U.S. is established by President Theodore Roosevelt, or Refuge. 
1961, a U.S. Air Force B-52 bomber crashes near Yuba City, California, whilst carrying a nuclear weapon. That'll scare the locals pretty good. It's always great when the news comes on and goes, oh yeah, you know that plume of smoke off in the distance we've been looking at for a couple days? Uh, it might kill us at any time, so maybe you ought to move. The crew of eight on the bomber survived, but one fireman did die while fighting the fire on the bomber, which could have blown up at any time. 1964, Jack Ruby is convicted of killing Lee Harvey Oswald, the assumed assassin of JFK. 1967, the body of U.S. President John F. Kennedy is moved to a permanent burial place at Arlington National Cemetery. Interesting story about that. Where they buried him, he had taken a tour of Arlington National Cemetery, and he was looking out over this one area over the Potomac, and he just mentioned in, like, passing, or while standing there, and it was overheard by the director of the cemetery. He goes, I could look at this view forever. And that's where they buried him. Premiered on March 14th, 2010, the Pacific. Have you ever had one of those moments where you realize something was made or done a lot further back in your past than you actually thought it was? This one is one of those for me. I could have swore that the Pacific was done maybe in 2017, 16, but not 2010. This was a great series done by HBO with Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. Together they made Saving Private Ryan and then decided to go into these mini series with HBO. It kind of followed that World War II theme. This was the second. The first one was called Band of Brothers. That was a series that followed the Stephen Ambrose book of the same name. And that one's the story of Easy Company of the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division. And the book and the miniseries follows their life during World War II from Normandy to VJ Day. Anyway, so the Pacific's their second one that's about Marines in the Pacific during World War II. Now, they're about to come out with another one called Masters of the Air. And that follows the crew members of some U.S. bombers during World War II. Anyway, if you ever get a chance, check out the Pacific. It's well worth it. If you haven't seen Band of Brothers, start there, watch the Pacific, and then get ready for HBO to release Masters of the Air. They're all based on true stories. Born on March 14th, 1879, Albert Einstein, iconic genius and legendary theoretic... Ah, you know who he is. He's one of the smartest guys that ever wandered the earth. He was born in Germany, but he came to America when Hitler rose to power. He worked on the Manhattan Project, which developed the atomic bomb. During World War II, his name was on a Nazi list of assassination targets with a $5,000 bounty on his head. He never wore socks. Einstein's last words were in German, and the nurse with him didn't understand German, so they don't know what his last words were. Albert Einstein died on April 17, 1959. He'd experienced internal bleeding caused by a rupture of an abdominal aortic aneurysm, which he'd previously had reinforced surgically. Now, they knew this was happening, and they wanted to put him in surgery again, and he refused. He said, I want to go when I want. It is tasteless to prolong life artificially. I have done my share. It is time to go. I will do it elegantly. He died at the University Medical Center in Princeton at Plainsboro early the next morning at the age of 76, having continued to work until the near end. Died on March 14th, 2018, Stephen Hawking, legendary physicist who was very interesting. He did a lot of things and wrote books about quantum mechanics. His 1988 book, A Brief History of Time, stayed on the British Sunday Times bestsellers list for a record-breaking 237 weeks. He had ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, and was almost entirely paralyzed and communicated through a speech-generated device. Stephen Hawking died at his home in Cambridge in the UK on March 14, 2018. He was 76 years old. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.